Welcome to our YouTube channel where wisdom meets inspiration. In this channel, we share valuable insights to help you become the best version of yourself. Our content is designed to uplift your spirit and enrich your life. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay connected with this incredible journey. Click the subscribe button below. Basic techniques to control thought. See, th basically, practically, what do you do? Just go through this. The right exposures, right ahar, what is called, will generate the right states of mind, isn't it? It all starts with the senses. Rhythmic breathing and posture can be tried to calm the mind. Whenever you feel very restless, you can try rhythmic breathing and posture. The picture I have given there is the picture of one thought. We are going to analyze a thought. What, what does it contain? What are the ingredi ingredients of a thought? You see, an idea will be there. Usually, an emotion also will be there. And your vital energy is enmeshed in all of this. That is why it appears like a conscious thought to you. How will you control this thought? By controlling any one of these. The idea, the emotion, or the vital energy there. So, these are all the steps towards that. Right exposures, rhythmic breathing and posture, right conduct, how you conduct yourself. Even physically, that to a great extent decides the states of your mind. Then, pratipaksha bhavanam, which means what, what is called cognitive reframing. Whenever you are in a state of negativity, you deliberately bring in positive thinking. It's called pratipaksha bhavana in yoga sutras, which means suppose you are in a state of anger. You deliberately bring in a good emotion. Try to be understanding of the situation. Suppose you are in a state of bitterness. You deliberately bring a smile on your face, learn to say sorry, thank you, something like this, so that you come back to the positive state of mind. Deliberately, consciously, willfully, it has to be done. This is the way to maintain the background balance of the mind. If you explode, the other person in front of you also will explode. Then nothing is possible. Isn't it? Hmm? So these are all practical steps. You see, the next step is regulated lifestyle and habits. A little bit of this is required. Getting up any time, not having breakfast, having brunch straight, then sleeping maybe at 12 o'clock or 1 o'clock. Little bit of regulation of lifestyle. I know some of you are laughing because, well, it just happens in student life. But, you know, I work with IITians. And after hearing all this repeatedly, they also say, yes, regulated life is very important for concentration. Hmm? A little bit, as much as you can, regulate your life, your eating habits, a little bit of sattvic living is required for you to muster the greatest powers of attention. If the wrong type of food is in your stomach, if you suffer a stomach upset, your mind will dwell only on the stomach. Isn't it? This is a little bit of regulation of lifestyle. You know it. Hmm? So, Make service a habit, a little meditation, prayer, deep thinking, studies. All these are going to affect your mind. They are going to get you towards where you want to go. Then, huh, here let me tell you, mind affects mind. That is why good company. You already have a number of faculty members here who are deeply into all this. I saw that. And so that generates a... You, you can connect with them. You can connect with good literature. So it's a way of elevating yourself consciously. If that happens, if you are able to do that, you will see all this becomes easy. It's not difficult. All this will bring, bring background stability to your mind. And through that, you can muster the highest powers of attention. If this becomes a possibility in your life, success is very close at hand. So this is the art and science of attention which I wanted to share with you. Okay, so another 5-10 minutes we can discuss something on this and we will have the question answer session also because participation is very important. See, some very profound ideas of yoga and Vedanta we have discussed. Let me just sum it up for you. First thing for attention is pay attention. Now sit straight all of you so that we just summarize the whole thing. First thing is Basic stability of mind, right? So that you are able to muster your powers of attention. S basic stability of mind, which means no over restless state. Basic calmness within you. Second is, you willfully 
direct your attention towards a particular thing you are the awareness which is mustering that attention see this clearly vedanta basically introduces you to yourself to the real you you are functioning through this body mind complex but please see this you are basically awareness when there is no thought in your mind you are still aware at any given point of time you are awareness functioning through the body mind complex this is basic vedant vedanta so if you see yourself like this you can readily handle this body mind complex if you think you are only the body or you are only your thoughts then what will happen i cannot control my thoughts i will not be in charge of this mechanism at all because i am the awareness which is able to watch my thoughts see you are able to watch your thoughts isn't it huh are you able to watch your thoughts or not have you tried it yes you are which means they are objective to you they are objects you the subject are watching them see if i raise my hand now am I, i can be aware i have raised my hand but my hand is not aware that i have raised it isn't it you are aware of your body your body is not aware of you which means awareness belongs to me the subject so simple vedanta is you the awareness are functioning through this mechanism of body mind you are not merely body and mind so don't insult yourself by just identifying with this you are the controller of this body and mind and you will use it for your purposes this is the strength that vedanta gives you you are essentially awareness at any given point of time assert that all power is within you that is why vivekananda said all knowledge is within you all concentration is within you everything that you require is within you you have to bring it out through proper understanding that is all so if you understand this even the mind is objective to your experience so you can handle it so you can control it and how will you handle your powers of attention by higher awareness and will unidirectional will and this background of awareness has come to the forefront i am more aware than merely identified with my thought process you getting the point more aware than merely identified with my fears and my anxieties and my thinking more aware than identified and will in moving in one direction and you have intense powers of concentration and attention so this is a possibility you can do this simply by regulating your lifestyle basically understanding how this mechanism works how your thoughts are working just do this and you will see you are in charge of your life what greater happiness can be there than saying i am in charge of my life the world will not direct how i will go i will direct it myself become swami vivekananda's messenger share the video with three of your friends <laughs>